Ende. I've been following the development of Monaco pretty intently for about four years now, because I love the concept of this game. It is a one to four player heist game. I love heist movies. The idea of a game that can pull off that sort of tense dynamic of a Ocean's Eleven or a Heat or a Snatch just kind of taps into my happy place, man. So the idea is this. You are part of a crew escaping from prison in Monaco. You've got to perform increasingly more dangerous heists to get out of the country. And like every heist movie, every member of the crew has their own specialization. There are eight characters in Monaco, ranging from a locksmith who can breeze through any door, to a helper monkey carrying pickpocket, to a mole that can dig through any wall in a level. And I had fun with all of them. Every level is a heist, so you have to get through the environment safely, grab something, get back out. Monaco's controls are extremely simple. To interact with anything in the environment, you just sort of walk up to it and press the left stick in the direction until the action is finished. So pressing up against doors picks locks, pressing up against computers hacks them, and pressing up against ladders will let you climb them. It simplifies the gameplay to the only thing that you should worry about in a heist, which is do I have enough time to pull this off before I get caught? The campaign is the same whether you play single or multiplayer, and it's fun either way. Single player is a great way to learn the ins and outs, get a feel for things, unlock levels. There's nothing wrong with it. But this thing is about a crew, and it gets exponentially better in co-op. If you go to the Monaco site, you've probably seen a quote from a preview of the game that I did a while ago where I called it quite possibly the best co-op ever, and I still stand by that. You just get these total movie moments in co-op that you can't get in single player and you cannot get in any other game. There was this brilliant bit where we were playing four player in a bank heist and we had a lookout figuring where the guards were and then we were using a mole to bust us through walls to avoid security. We got into the vault, we were making our way out carefully when two guys took a wrong turn, got knocked out, set off the alarm. Monaco doesn't let you finish a level without everyone. And if everyone gets knocked out, it's game over. So all of a sudden, this thing turned from a stealthy bank heist into this insane shotgun fight as we tried to double back to save our partners and get out with every obstacle in the level coming at us at once. And that's what makes Monaco so brilliant as a heist game. Everything can turn on a dime. And whether you sneak perfectly through a room full of guards in a disguise, or you totally set off every alarm and you barely make it out, every level still feels tense and you still get that heist movie feeling. And because all the characters are different and you can play with different numbers of people or on multiple difficulties, everything feels crazy fresh every time. The awesome thing about the level and character class design in Monaco isn't that everything is incredibly well balanced. It's just that certain maps and certain characters fit together better. In a level with a ton of guards in the open, you're gonna need a lookout with his ability to see all the enemies on screen when he's sneaking. Some levels you have to backtrack through danger over and over, and having the mole's ability to bust a hole in any wall to make a new path is gonna save you some time. But it's gonna make extra noise, right? So maybe you wanna bring in the locksmith and just breeze through all these locked doors. Monaco has got a really ambitious and unique look to it. It's mostly brilliant, but it works against itself sometimes. The character and object designs are simple and semi-abstract. The whole level looks like a blueprint, and as you walk down a hall or enter a room, your field of vision gets illuminated in this brightly colored reveal. It's sort of fog of warish, wrapping around obstacles like columns or corners, and anything important you see stays on your map, even if you duck out of visibility. Now the problem is that this stuff is so brightly colored and simplified and abstract that it can be hard to figure out what's going on when things get busy. I mean, you've got these computer terminals on your map that are squares with circles in them. Safes are squares with diamonds in them. People to pickpock are diamonds with circles in them. Okay, that's not easy. Probably the roughest example I can think of was a level where four of us were playing and we were crammed in this tight hallway where we all had crossbows with laser sights, but we were trying to get through this field of laser traps that looked exactly the same as our sights and were all these little overlapping matching pixel dudes. It was pretty frustrating for the newer players. You'll find that people 
who are new to the game wind up watching the wrong character sometimes instead of their own. It's just, you probably noticed watching this review, it's not clear at first, but you will acclimate. You're also gonna want a big TV for local co-op, like a big one. When your crew spreads out and that map scales, it's like crazy. And all of those iconography issues are going to get worse on a small screen. You know, like I said, take a couple levels and acclimate. This stuff becomes manageable, but I do wish that things were a bit clearer for new players. The music in Monaco is by Austin Winery, the composer behind last year's incredible Journey soundtrack. I go back and forth on the music in this game even more than the look, I think. It's this classic silent movie piano score that situationally reacts and changes, so a guard walking by can ratchet things up a bit, and a gunfight makes things go completely up-tempo and insane. I love the concept of it, but in practice over long play sessions, you begin to wish for a little more variation, a few more instruments, something with a little more depth. The sound design is great, the guards speak in these awesome deep French voices, and the little sounds of picking locks or hacking terminals is awesome. The sound of bandaging up and reviving a fallen crew member is appropriately nasty. And you know, I'm dinging some of the stuff on the visuals, I'm dinging some of the stuff on accessibility, the solo campaign, but look, you're gonna get moments with Monaco that you just don't get with other games. You're gonna get this really amazing co-op experience that genuinely has a feeling to it that I think is unmatched in any other game out there. It's got this brilliant take on stealth and class-based teamwork, and most importantly, it does what it means to do. It feels like a heist movie. Straight up, you feel like a team of master criminals. Monaco is mixing genres and ideas in new ways and pulling them off with just a few small glitches along the way. I give it a four out of five. So there you go. Let me know down below if you guys are getting Monaco, if you already got it, what character you like playing as, and if you have any questions. I know, like I said, visually this thing can be a little confusing. So definitely let me know anything that wasn't clear to you down below, and be sure to subscribe here at Rev3 Games for more reviews.